Hi, I'm Eric Burris from the State Water Resource Control Board Citizen Monitoring Program, the Clean Water Team. And you're viewing this because you probably borrowed some equipment from us to measure velocity. This is a velocity meter. It comes from Global Water. When we put this on loan to you, you'll receive an implement here. This holds the actual gauge here, the little propeller here spins around. This has a collar that allows you to adjust for depth. This is the business end. This is the readout. That comes wrapped in bubble wrapping so that we can keep it safe. You also get some other documentation. Instruction book, some tips and warnings, a quick sheet for referencing things, and this is really important for your quality assurance project plan. This is the certificate for testing. This tells you the specifications for this particular unit. This one has an accuracy of 0.1 feet per second. Its calibration is uh, one foot per second, two meters per second. And this is all tracked by a serial number. Now the range for this is 0.3 to 15 feet per second. So anything slower or greater than that, you'll have to use a different type of velocity meter. In addition to having the serial number to track things, this has been assigned a unique code. You'll find that etched on your handle here. There's the model number. This happens to be an FP101. There's the serial number. And below that, we have FLO-STB07. This means that it's a flow meter. It's owned by the State Board, and it's my seventh unit in this series. That's how we track all of our equipment on our daily monitoring sheets and in our databases for all of our data. Every single piece of data that's been collected in the field should be traceable to the meter that produced it. In addition to all this stuff that comes from the manufacturer, get yourself a paper clip. In order to change the batteries or calibrate the flow probe computer, the computer module must first be removed from the probe housing. This is done by rotating the computer module counterclockwise to the left 45 degrees and lifting it up. To remove the batteries, use a coin, screwdriver, or a large paper clip to remove the battery cover by turning the cover counterclockwise to the left. Replace the battery so that the plus side is showing. Replace the battery cover by turning it clockwise to the right. After the battery has been replaced, the flow probe must be recalibrated. Press the top button to switch between metric and English units. Press the bottom button to accept. For metric units, a Roman numeral 1 will be displayed in the upper left hand corner of the display. Press the top button until the first digit reads 0. Press the bottom button and the second digit will flash. Press the bottom button until the second digit reads 0. Press the bottom button and the third digit will flash. Press the top button until the digit reads 5. Press the bottom button until the fourth digit flashes. Press the top button until the digit reads 3. Next, turn the computer module over and press the recessed button in the upper right hand corner labeled S to store the calibration. Press the bottom button until the display does not show 
clock or total ODO. Press the indented button in the upper left hand corner labeled Roman numeral 1 slash Roman numeral 2 for units until the display shows a Roman numeral 2 in the upper left corner of the display. Press the S button for 3 seconds until the display flashes. Press the top button until the first digit reads 0. Press the bottom button and the display will flash. Press the top button until the second digit reads 0. Press the bottom button and the third digit will flash. Press the top button until the digit reads 1. Press the bottom button until the fourth digit flashes. Press the top button until the digit reads 6. Press the S button to store and then press the units button 1 forward slash 2 to select feet per second or metric. Press the bottom button until the display shows average speed. Now you're ready to use the flow probe. There are three different ways that we can use this probe in our streams to measure velocity. The first one, you take the probe itself and we move this through the water column evenly from one side to the other, bang to bang. Just as if you were spray painting a wall, spray painting a board, you want to have nice even coverage. Same thing with this, moving it evenly and slowly through the water column, and this will calculate an average speed. The second way is to divide the water into cross sections. Every two to three feet, you can take the probe and move it slowly up and down through that box, and it'll produce a velocity. Do that through the entire cross section, every two to three feet. Go through and get these averages and then write those down on your data sheet.
get back from the field, you can calculate the average from all of those averages. That's probably the best way. The third method is the 0.6 method. Protocols for that can be found on the Surface Water Ambient Monitoring Program Protocols CD. And it's also covered in many of the Clean Water Team printed SOPs.